We're going to start by talking about conditionals. We're going to discuss what a conditional is and what the point of them are in all major programming languages. Then we'll talk about the specific keywords that Python gives us to talk about conditionals in a programmatic way. And then we'll end the lesson with decision trees. We're going to talk about what a decision tree is, how an emergent property is thought of, and what it means to talk about flow control in the context of a decision tree. So remember, dry ice is nothing but frozen carbon dioxide. Our first mnemonic is going to be an air conditioner, and it's going to represent the topic of conditionals in general. And the reason why I think this makes such a great mnemonic is because the way my air conditioner works right here in the room is very similar to the way that a conditional works. Not to mention conditioner sounds like conditional. But the reason why they're so similar is because I can set my air conditioner to a specific temperature. So I like to sleep with it at 64 degrees, for example. And then throughout the night, the air conditioner is constantly checking the temperature. It's looking into the room and saying, is it hotter than 64 degrees? Is it 65, 66? And then when it becomes hotter, it triggers an action. And the action is to turn on the air conditioner and start cooling the room. And this is similar to how conditionals wait around. They keep checking their environments until they're given some kind of specified signal. And at that point, they execute a special block of code that would normally be skipped over. So the point of conditionals is to allow us to put our actions into a context, just like the action of turn the air conditioner on in the context of a room that's too hot. Now, if you think about this from a user experience point of view, it's great to think about basic actions, like when a button is clicked on a website. Then you can have a specific action taken, like go to a new web page or perform some kind of an action. But the button's waiting around to be clicked on. Now, this is also important in situations where we want conditions inside of a condition, like an environment that can trigger an overlapping condition. For example, we might want to build a website where a video auto plays for the user when the web page is loaded. But we also don't want two videos to play for the user at the same time. So nested inside of the first condition, which is on user load, start playing the video, we have another conditional check that says, is another video already playing? If so, don't play this video. Or if not, do play this video. So that way we can have these kind of nested conditions that give us much more power to create a user experience that makes sense. Now our next mnemonic is going to represent the topic of the Python specific keywords. And it's going to be Anna from the movie Frozen, her iffy sister Elsa, and an elf from Santa's workshop. And the reason I chose this trio to represent our keywords is because Elsa sounds a little similar to else. Anna is her iffy sister. And L if sounds very similar to elf. And the three are all related by the cold weather. OK, so Python gives us three main words to specify our conditions. The if statement, the else statement, and the l if statement. So you can imagine using the if statement, where you're wanting to say, OK, if the temperature is high enough, then turn on the air conditioner. And then you might want to use an else statement packaged right next to it to say, in any other condition, no matter what it is, then do something else like not turn on the air conditioner or turn on the heat. If it's not hot, just turn on the heat no matter what. Or we can also add something called an L if statement. And that would go in between, sort of sandwiched between the if and the else statement. So you can think of it as if, if you want to just do one thing by itself. You can think of if or else, if it's do this or do that. Or you can think of if one thing, L if do two things, L if again maybe do three things, and then else do something at the end. Now you can use any combination of these. You can just do an if statement by itself, an if and an else statement, or an if and an L if, and there is no else. So you know we'll see this in the next video in code, so you can kind of get a feel for it. But just remember the if statement is the core one, and then we can also build on top of that if we want to get more specific with our conditions. And our final mnemonic for this lesson is a tree that is made with only branches. There's no leaves on this tree, and it represents the concept of a decision tree. Now, the reason this all branch tree represents the topic of a decision tree is because the best way to visualize multiple conditions, Boolean conditions, is with a branching tree-like visualization. You can start at the trunk. You can branch into either left or right, like a fork in the road, and then again and again and again. And you end up with a very tree-like structure of where you might end up. So what are decision trees? Now, decision trees happen when we start stacking up lots of conditionals. And they're not a Python construct on their own. They're an emergent property that comes just from stacking these simple Boolean decisions.
And it's really incredible if you think about how these simple logical choices, left or right, up or down, one or zero, when they stack together, they bring you to these amazingly complex tree branches. And the outcomes have hundreds, thousands, millions of different outcomes, and they just build up over and over again in the most simple way and become the most complex thing. And related to this is the concept of flow control. Now, flow control is associated with decision trees and other systems, but it's a broader topic. It's a conversation about how information might move through a system like a decision tree, for example. Imagine we had built some software for a call center. So there's one phone number that many callers will call, and then they have some options. They can either press number one to talk to tech support or two to talk to billing. Now we can keep rerouting these in choices. Press number one again or number two once you're inside of billing for certain options. And we could end up with this complex decision trees of where people end up. Now the conversation of flow control would be about how the data is actually working in real life. When all of the callers actually call in, what percentage of them go down one branch? What percent go down the other? And then do we need to change the way the structure is to handle it in a more balanced way, for example? But flow control is about how it flows through the system. Decision trees are really just conditionals built on top of each other, and it's a way to think about and visualize the bigger emergent property that happens. We first learned the mnemonic of an air conditioner to represent the general concept of a conditional. We learned that conditionals allow us to put our actions into the context of an environment, only trigger in specific environments. We learned that Python keywords we can use to implement these conditionals evaluate the condition and then return a Boolean response, a true or a false response for us to use. We learned that we can use the true response to then execute a specific set of code that otherwise would have been concealed from compiling. Time. We learned the mnemonic of Anna and Elsa from Frozen and their friend the Elf from Santa's Workshop and how those represent our main keywords for implementing these conditionals in Python, if, else, and elif. We learned about the order these are usually used in with if at the top, elif below it, and then else at the very bottom. And then finally we learned our last mnemonic, which was a tree that was made only of branches. And this represented a decision tree. And we learned that decision trees happen as an emergent property when we stack up a lot of these binary Boolean conditionals. And then we learned about an associated but broader topic called flow control and how that is really a conversation about how information moves through a system like a decision tree. So now let's pull up our trusty Jupyter notebooks and start looking at examples of these ideas expressed in code. Subscribe to our Mnemonic Academy YouTube channel for daily uploads that will help you learn amazing concepts through effortless associations.